Hello, my name is Maureen Hahn. I'm the president and CEO of the Canadian Council on Rehabilitation and Work. I'm also a steering committee member for Disability and Work Canada. It's my pleasure to introduce you to our keynote today, Equity, Diversity and Inclusion at Canada Post. Speaking from Canada Post is David Soltis, Director, Talent Acquisition and Employment Policy, and Janet Nugan, Advisor, Equity, Diversity and Inclusion. I look forward to hearing their presentation on their journey of disability confidence at Canada Post. Hello everyone, thank you for joining me today to talk about equity, diversity and inclusion at Canada Post. My name is Janet Nguyen and I'm the advisor for equity, diversity and inclusion and I'm thrilled to be speaking to you about our focus on connecting with persons with disabilities and building relationships with industry leaders in these communities in order to meet our broader business goals. So let me start by sharing some background on Canada Post. We're a Crown Corporation with a 250 year old history, 68,000 employees across Canada. We have four unions, Canadian Union of Postal Workers, Canadian Postmasters and Assistants Association, Union of Postal Communications Employees, and the Association of Postal Officials of Canada. We're also part of a group of companies including Purolator, Nova Post, SCI Logistics. Our combined revenue in 2019 was 7.9 billion, and our key focus areas as a company has been on health and safety, mental health, as well as aligning with our unions and becoming an employer of choice. Canada Post is going through a massive transformation as we work to shift our business from letter mail to parcels. With our long established history, a large and unrivaled fleet, and quite an expansive network, we've been very well positioned to address the growing demand of the e-commerce business. We have a dual mandate to operate a postal service and service to all Canadians, but to also stay viable and compete in the parcel delivery business. These mandates have required us to evolve and transform to meet the needs of our customers, requiring ingenuity and innovation in order to stay viable. Internally, we've referred to ourselves as a 250 year old startup with the same needs to be responsive to our customers, learn through market feedback, make changes where we can while we do this as quickly as we can. Our path to develop an EDI strategy followed this same path. I'd like now to share our vision as it pertains to EDI. Our vision, Canada Post will represent Canada's diversity and provide a safe and welcoming workplace that embraces and celebrates our differences. This vision is where we aspire to be. Our mission highlights why it is that EDI is important to us. Our mission, we value diversity as an essential part of who we are as a company how we operate and how we see our future. Canada Post believes that attracting, developing and retaining people who reflect the diversity of Canada is essential to our success because this matters to all communities and customers we serve. I'd like to share with you a short video to reacquaint you to today's Canada Post. Okay, you gotta listen to me, you gotta listen, all right? This is why this is why you have to work at Canada Post, okay? It's a perfect time to join Canada Post. It's changing, it's changing faster than we've ever seen it. It spans coast to coast to coast, serving Canadians. It's the one organization that I know of that actually reaches the doorstep of every single Canadian. As the markets transform and change, we also need to transform and change. It's an old company that has such a strong presence and such a strong Canadian brand. Canadians identify Canada Post, of course, with letter mail, and Canada Post is so much more than that. As we're enablers for, uh, I see it as e-commerce, but also brick and mortar business, really any business moving throughout Canada. This is a very, very diverse uh, workplace. And there are some extremely bright people here um, that are just doing some phenomenal work. And it's the first time that I've ever experienced this, this dual mandate of serving the public and at the same time running a commercial business. With each and everything that you're looking for, you'll find it here. I was started as an assistant, I was a rec recruitment officer, I was in human rights and legislative programs. I then went on an assignment into operations where I was a supervisor in transportation and OMG, I didn't know I worked for the same company. From engineers, uh, digital designs, um, marketing, nurses, you know, drivers, um, there's a lot. You people taking 
you know, my video. For myself, I really like the security. I really like being able to look at one company and say there's a thousand different things I can do in this one company. I work with a lot of great people. It, genuinely speaking, I wouldn't be here if it were any, any other way. I wouldn't, I'd move on. Ever since I got here day one, it's been people looking to expand my career, expand my interests, and kind of get to the next level. There are so many opportunities that someone can have at Canada Post. It does not start at uh, the first career you've taken at Canada Post. That's just the start. Because of this job, I have seen almost every province in Canada and one territory. And I'm hoping that through another three years in this company, I'll have seen every territory and every province. It is a fun place to work. We have great, great, great people, right? We support each other. It is a good atmosphere. You're gonna come into work every day and you're gonna enjoy it. At the bottom line, that's, that's what we look for a job, right? Do we not wanna have fun? Love it. Absolutely love it. So I want you to come to Canada Post because not only will you enjoy your job, but you will be challenged and you will be supported by senior executives and you will have opportunities. The opportunities will be there. Our equity, diversity, and inclusion strategy is anchored on three pillars. From an employment equity objective, we're doing very well when it comes to women and members of visible minorities. We have gender parity and have attained full representation as it becomes as we have gender parity and have attained full representation as it pertains to visible minorities. There is, however, a gap when it comes to hiring and retaining of Indigenous people and persons with disabilities. This has been a focus for us and our colleagues in the Accessibility and Indigenous and Northern Affairs teams at Canada Post. We're working to improve our results in these areas with set targets to move us forward. Our diversity objective is tied to cultivating a workforce where people feel safe, respected, and have a sense of belonging. This will require us to go beyond the four equity groups and focus on LBGTQ2+, religious diversity, as well as newcomers and other groups. From an inclusion objective, this is where we can drive improvements in the workplace that values people of all backgrounds to foster innovation and creativity. Some examples, including installing all gender restrooms and multi-faith prayer rooms in select plants and depots. All three of these objectives will require us to assess our existing processes, seek input from those most impacted, communicate our goals, and build relationships to support our evolution and journey. Our high-level plan includes three key streams that are really running concurrently. The first stream focuses on building relationships and partnerships with our bargaining groups to support us in the strategy development. We held our first Joint Equity and Diversity Committee meeting on January 30th of this year with representation from all of our unions. Working with the Canadian Centre for Diversity and Inclusion, CCDI, all committee members participated in an unconscious bias training and explored key concepts for equity, diversity, and inclusion. Our partnership has been exceptionally successful as we anchored on establishing a safe space for discussion and learning to work collaboratively and in good faith to co-create our equity, diversity, and inclusion strategy. Our focus on building trust and shared goals was essential to the successful development and implementation of an anti-racism action plan. Last month, we released a joint letter to all of our employees communicating a three-tier action plan which includes, first, a commitment to investing in resources and budget for EDI. Two, the deployment of training and support tools focusing on where these resources are most needed and sequencing accordingly. Three, we introduce initiatives to increase representation. I'll go now into more detail on this initiative as it is the second stream of our high-level plan. In addition to focusing on our relationship with our unions, other partnerships have been key in the equity attraction front. To tackle our gaps in representation, we established employment equity targets and KPIs. For Indigenous peoples, achieving our target will increase our representation rates to 80% of Canadian labour market availability within five years. Our goal for achieving 80% of CLMA for persons with disabilities will take longer to achieve, potentially up to 10 years, due to the physical nature of many of our occupations and roles. We're working to remove barriers and implement changes to our processes and work methods to attract candidates from this group. Our partnership with the Canadian Centre on Rehabilitation and Work has identified ways to improve the candidate experience through auditing of our recruitment processes and practices to identify barriers to recruitment for persons with disabilities. 
as well as an in-depth review of our accommodation process. Other key partnerships include the Employment Accessibility Resource Network, EARN, who also with CCRW supported us in hosting targeted recruitment fairs to attract students and persons with disabilities. Along with CCRW and EARN, another key partner has been CCDI. All three of these external partners have guided us in upskilling our recruiters and hiring managers to manage bias in the recruitment and onboarding process, as well as to become more disability confident. This year, we also participated in the Dolphin Disability Mentoring Day through CCRW to encourage awareness of Canada Post as an employer of choice, as well as to build stronger networks with the disabilities community. Other external partnerships include leveraging guidance from the Canadian Human Rights Commission to implement temporary special measures for hiring of Indigenous people and persons with disabilities. These measures allow us to set aside dedicated roles for targeted recruitment and equity seeking candidates. These pilots open the door to working more closely with our unions and partners to review the collective agreements or the systemic barriers that exist. So from an employee retention perspective, in keeping with the theme of collaboration, our EDNI team has been working really closely with the Indigenous and Northern Affairs teams, as well as the accessibility teams to integrate our strategies and realize our mutual goals. Together, we're focusing on a number of key actions. We've prioritized education and awareness training. Our approach in rolling out this training was to showcase accountability at the highest levels of leadership. Employees are invited to our training workshops through a message from our CEO, stressing the importance and value of EDNI to our business strategy. We developed a training plan anchored on understanding implicit bias, and by the end of this year, we will have trained over 600 of our human resources, disability management, and all of senior leadership above the director level. We will be focusing on training our boards, the national executive boards for our unions, as well as all of our operations team leaders by the end of next year, totaling another 3,000 employees countrywide. And our plan is to enhance our existing training offerings to include diversity and inclusion and implicit bias content to our existing employees and new hires, totaling more than 60,000 folks. Another key initiative is an equity census campaign. Our hope is to communicate the importance of self-identification in order to have the most accurate data as it pertains to representation within our workforce so that we can really create programs that reflect the, and address the needs of our employees. We understand that this will require us to cultivate trust and transparency so that we can motivate full participation. We're working closely with our unions to support us by promoting the census and communicating our plans to their membership. Our EDNI and accessibility teams are also working closely with CCRW to review opportunities for a better candidate experience as it pertains to accommodation. In addition to reviewing our processes at the recruitment phase, we're also reviewing this process for employees seeking accommodation when their diversity profiles change. We're working to enhance this process as well as integrating opportunities to update and make status changes to their equity census information again, to get the most accurate representation of our workforce so that we can develop effective programs that speak to our employees' needs. Another key component of equity retention strategy is standing up mentoring networks and employee resource groups. Evidence has shown that these groups have a really powerful effect on retention and offering support to equity-seeking employees, but also provide opportunities to influence changes that will foster more inclusivity. The goal is to have these groups offer recommendations and guidance on EDNI initiatives, but also participate in our commemorative days. This specific initiative involved working with our human rights teams and collaborating with all our unions to implement a joint calendar and commemorative events for employees to participate. Last year, we lit up our head office in purple lights for International Day of Persons with Disabilities similar to the rainbow lights depicted on the vision slide at the beginning of the presentation. With a focus on creating trusting partnerships, collaborating to increase our representation, and focusing on the things that matter to our employees so that we retain them, we feel really well positioned to meet our goals to be an inclusive employer of choice as we work to transform and evolve our workforce. We understand this is a journey, and while we have realized many successes, we've also faced challenges and risks. I'll, I'll share some of those lessons learned in my closing summary. 
As mentioned at the beginning of this presentation, we recognize that this is a journey with risks and challenges, but with a potential for high rewards when we get it right. Some of the key challenges included promoting engagement from our unions, so involving them from the beginning and having their involvement in defining our shared goals, our vision and mission statements, as well as our terms of reference. We got the right people at the table and the governance structure was key. Only weeks after the launch of our committee, there was a world pandemic that, recreated, that created isolation and many competing priorities. We pivoted to virtual meetings and gained commitment to meet more frequently so that we could be responsive to the needs of our employees. And then we set aggressive goals for every meeting and interaction. We incorporated what was going on in the world into the work we were doing so that we were ensuring it was a priority. We recognized early the conflicts between the Employment Equity Act and uh, mandate and the union's um, collective agreements. Again, we always went back to our shared goals and focused on how we could work together to influence and make the changes we knew we needed to make. We continue to work with our unions to address the systemic barriers posed by the terms of a collective agreement, but we're closer than we've ever been before by building a spirit of trust and partnership. Oftentimes, the hard work of diversity and inclusion, as with many change initiatives, is directly linked to a lack of momentum or sustainability. We harness the momentum created by the anti-racism movement and solidify a higher level of commitment from our leaders, unions, and partnerships, and employees to create a sense of urgency and action. We've been successful thus far because of four key things, transparency and communication, measurements, KPIs, and targets, getting leadership support and full accountability, and most importantly, our partnerships, relationships, and building trust. This marks the end of our presentation. Thank you for your time today. Uh, we're happy to take your questions now. Thank you.